Death Mage Volume 9 Character Summary Part 1 Vandalu Zakert, Damper, Goddess, 11 years old, male. After many long years, he has finally achieved the resurrection of his mother, Darshia. He does not see any particular problem with his mother having not revived as a dark elf, but as the founder of a new race, or her having become a magical girl and performing idle activities for the sake of preaching. In fact, Vandalu is happy that Darshia has become stronger. Naturally, her transformation staff is something that he made himself. He believes that Darshia's popularity and the way she attracts men's attention and gazes is only natural, so he does not see any particular issue with that either. As mentioned above, the transformation staff that turns into the clothes that Darshia wears on stage is something that he made himself. However, he does make an effort to deal with things when people try to cling to her persistently or take things too far, so some caution is needed when cheering for the idols. The safety of Agar, a guard in the city of Morxi, is dependent on his morals and manners towards women. Vandalu believes that he must find an opportunity to go to the demon continent and speak to the heroic spirit Felt, who is likely responsible for Darshia gaining the monster's parent title. Vandalu reached the demon continent, which had previously been unvisited by anyone but Schneider, and met Xantark and Farmoun. He was also taken to Earth and Origin in a soul-only form by Zuraworn and Rick Lent, where he was given the divine protection of great gods. He unintentionally gave his divine protection to the people he encountered on the way back, and handed a clone of himself to Mekuin. He is unaware that Mekuin is Amamiya May, or that the reincarnated individuals Metamorph and Druid are among the people that he has given his divine protection to. He has invented demon king familiars, built from fragments of the demon king. These are used for the defense of the nation, as temporary party members and also in Kanako's concerts. They have been deployed over a wide area, they are present in both Talashim and the demon continent. Vandalu himself is currently infiltrating Morxi, a city in the Alcrum Duchy of the Orbom Kingdom. His objective is to bait out the party of reincarnated individuals led by the Kronos Murakami, who are out there trying to kill Vandalu and the purebreed vampire Burkine. If possible, he also wishes to register at the guilds such as the Commerce Guild in order to acquire a place in human society. In the future, he hopes that he can draw in the believers of Vida in the Orbom Kingdom, who currently have a friendly relationship with Alda's peaceful faction. Vandalu had previously thought he would only be able to coexist with the reincarnated individuals if they stayed away from him, but when Kanako and her companions defected to Talashim, he accepted them for his own interests, such as acquiring information. As a result, his thoughts regarding the reincarnated individuals have changed trajectory, he now thinks that he can coexist more closely with some of them. However, it seems that he does not intend to coexist this way with Murakami, who is aiming to take his life, or a Seiji. Kurados, the god of records, created elaborate copies of Vandalu to use in trials for the five colored blades. Vandalu's abyss skill was unintentionally activated, causing him to possess these copies and infiltrate Alda's dungeon in a way that even the gods would never have foreseen. On the fiftieth floor of the dungeon, Vandalu simply watched, unable to move his body. But on the sixty-fifth floor, he took full control over the copy from the very beginning. As a result, he tried to destroy Heinz and his companions after becoming enraged from witnessing them defeating the copies of his companions. During this process, his unarmed fighting technique skill awakened into soul destruction fighting technique, which allows him to wear his materialized soul as armor, increasing his defensive and offensive capabilities. As a result of the battle, Heinz and his companions were driven into a corner and Vandalu unleashed the world-piercing destructive hollow cannon, devouring the souls of the heroic spirit Joshua and Curados, the god of records, along with himself. This also caused catastrophic damage to the dungeon. However, Vandalu was unable to destroy the three individuals that he wanted revenge on, and he sustained great damage by devouring his own soul. Thus, he believes that the battle ended in a draw, despite the fact that all those forces actually suffered far greater losses. Vandalu's soul, which was broken to pieces, is currently being rebuilt with the help of his companions.
It seems that those who have received his mysterious divine protection or have consumed Vandalia's blood or the blood potion that is made from it are able to participate in this task. Darcia, Chaos Elf, zero years old, female. Vandalia's mother, who was once the soul of a dark elf. She has been resurrected as the founder of the new Chaos Elf race and an incarnation of Vida. Though she was merely an average D-class adventurer when she lived as a dark elf, with the training that she underwent in Vita's divine realm, she was resurrected with enough fighting strength to defeat A-class and S-class adventurers. The only change to her appearance is that her skin is darker than when she was a dark elf, and her personality hasn't changed at all, or so she thinks, but the truth is that there are some small differences. As the founder of the Chaos Elves, she feels an aching instinct to turn any elves and dark elves she sees into Chaos Elves. The transformation process is simple and fast, she simply needs to hold the person's hands, lightly embrace them or kiss them, but the person needs to have a true desire to be transformed into a Chaos Elf. This also means that if they refuse verbally but truly wish to become a Chaos Elf, they can be transformed. But this urge is not too strong, so while she respectfully tries to persuade people to want to become Chaos Elves, she does not force it upon them. Once transformed, she treats Chaos Elves as her own children. One example of this is calling Kanako, Kanachan. She attempted to call Melissa Melichan, but she has stopped as Melissa does not like it. She also treats Pauvina and the others like her own daughters even though they are not Chaos Elves. She knew Rita and Saria since she was a ghost, so she thinks of them as her younger sisters, and she thinks of Bone Man and Nochen as younger brothers. She has changed jobs to Magical Girl and accepted Kanako's request to participate in idol activities, but as an incarnation of Vida, she takes the idol activities seriously, focusing on propagating her religion. However, she does sometimes think that the dance routines are too bold and feels some hesitation in walking about on stage in her stage outfit, the clothes that appear when she activates her transformation staff. As an ace up her sleeve, she is able to activate Goddess Descent, a skill that is superior to Familiar Descent and even to Heroic Spirit Descent and Spirit Clone Descent. This skill summons a part of Vida, the goddess of life and love, into her body, and she becomes a true avatar of the goddess. The increase in attribute values when she does so is enormous, and if she were to register herself at an adventurer's guild, she would instantly become an S-class adventurer on the same day simply due to the fact that she is able to summon a goddess into her body. Ordinarily, using goddess descent would cause Vita's mind to take over, and the skill would take a great toll on her mind and body. But in Darcia's case, Vita herself does not wish for her mind to take over, and the two coexist in the same body while the skill is active. Furthermore, there are almost no negative effects on Darcia after using the skill. This is assumed to be because Darcia was very compatible with Vita to begin with, and the fact that she went through training to align her state with hers. Regarding the five colored blades who killed her, Darcia did not feel much resentment towards them to begin with. She was more worried about Vandalu doing something reckless, but she did not do much to try and stop him because she believed that the five colored blades would not accept Vandalu's existence and values, and because she was under the effects of death attribute charm. This was the case until recently. In recent events, the five colored blades and the gods of all those forces caused great damage to Vandalu and inflicted deep mental scars upon him. Darcia's thoughts towards them have now completely changed, she feels anger towards the five colored blades and will never forgive them. It is likely that she will fight with all her strength at her son's side the next time she faces them, this time in the flesh. Darcia took a break from her idol activities to look after Vandalu, who lost consciousness after his soul was damaged. With the help of Guffedgarn, she reached the city of Morxi and is now staying there, but she is actually very excited, as it is her first time in the Orbom Kingdom. As she was once an adventurer in the human society of the Amid Empire, Agar's straightforward attitude falls into the cute category for her, so she is fine with it at present. She might become a little angry if she were to learn that he has forced a bribe from Vandalio, however. Amamiya May, human, origin, one year old, female. The second child of Amamiya Hirodo and Naruz Narumi, whose name changed to Amamiya Narumi after marriage. 
perhaps due to the fact that she was enveloped in Pluto's death attribute magic in the early stages of her mother's pregnancy, May was born with an aptitude for the death attribute. She is a baby girl with the qualities to become the first naturally born death attribute mage since the undead Amamiya Hirodo. Immediately after her birth, she was a quiet baby who did not cry, but as she became one year old, she has become a lively girl who likes to play. She immediately latched onto Vandalyu when she met him in her dreams, and has named the clone that she received from him Banda. Also, it seems that she prefers being called Mekuan rather than Mechan. Her favorite things are long, squiggly objects such as tentacles and tongues. The Avalon Rakudu Hajiri has taken notice of her, but the only ones who are aware of her special qualities are Banda and the three familiar spirits in Rodcourt's divine realm. Banda, Vandalyu's clone? Years old, male personality. The clone that Vandalyu made on his way back from origin for Mekuin. His personality is identical to Vandalyu's, and his body is made of the fragments of the demon king that Vandalyu directly ripped off his soul. His appearance is human at first glance, from afar, he might appear to be a tall person wearing a mask and furry coat. But from up close, one would see that the mask's four eyes and the mouth that stretches from ear to ear are real. What appears to be a coat is actually a membrane that conceals his body, and beneath it are his four arms and six legs, folded away. If he stretches his arms and legs out, he is over two meters tall. Banda possesses all of the Demon King fragments that Vandalyu had at the end of Volume 9 and is capable of activating them at will. Although the status system does not exist in origin and he is unable to check, it can be assumed that he also has almost identical skills to the ones Vandalyu possessed at the time of their separation. Thus, he does not possess the perfect record technique skill. It can also be assumed that he possesses the same physical capabilities as Vandalyu at the time of their separation, but again, this is difficult to confirm. Furthermore, he is able to use death attribute magic and no attribute magic. However, he only possesses 100 million mana, so he is unable to cast spells that require enormous amounts of mana, such as Hollow Cannon. Incidentally, 100 million mana is approximately equal to the total mana pools of 10,000 of Origins Elite Mages. Banda is a being with a separate personality from Mei's, but his main body is clearly Mei, he remains in spirit form with no physical presence unless he uses the materialization skill, and he is unable to be more than 50 meters away from her. Banda has checked this himself and is aware of this. Incidentally, he did not know that Mekuan was Amamiya Mei until he awoke in origin. Unable to communicate with the real Vandalyu, what will happen to Banda as he is shown the happy life of the Amamiya family? Hang in there, Banda! Amamiya Hirodo's return from overseas is drawing close. This is the current situation, but Banda has no intention of meddling with the Amamiya household's affairs or taking revenge for his previous life. The thing that Banda prioritizes most is Amamiya May, and he does not wish to destroy an environment that provides her a healthy childhood. His behavior is driven by this prioritization of May, and he is generally uninterested in things that are not related to her. However, he is not entirely as cool-headed as Vandalyu, he actively saves people in order to set a good example for May. However, if there was anything that would harm May or the people around her, he would deal with it accordingly, just like Vandalyu. Kanako Tsuchiya, Elf-Chaos Elf, 2 years old, 15 years old in appearance, female. The reincarnated individual with the ability codenamed Venus. She betrayed the Bravers with Murakami's group, died, and was reincarnated in Lambda. After that, she led Melissa and Doug in betraying Murakami and Rodcourt in order to defect to Talashim, her history is full of betrayal, though she is not treated like a traitor. In Talashim, she is trusted and has been given an important position in the nation. During her life on Earth, she aspired to become an idol, and she made that dream come true in origin, but when she was around 18 years old, she had no choice but to join the Bravers organization founded by Amamiya Hirodo, and her idol career came to an inevitable end. That is why she never truly thought of Amamiya and the others as her companions. 
Because she copied memories from political criminals in order to gain information, her mind suffered, unbeknownst to anyone else. In order to recover, she decisively carried out a forceful treatment by using Venus upon herself to alter her memories. As a result, she remains the same person that she has always been on the surface, but her internal personality has changed. However, even before she did this, she thought in ways that are similar to the current Vandalio, such as not using good and evil as criteria for decision-making and not abusing her ability more than necessary. Incidentally, after joining the Eighth Guidance, she gave the leader Pluto several pieces of advice for her media stunts. After she was reincarnated in Lambda and parted ways with Murakami, she was disguising herself as an ordinary D-class adventurer during her journey to the edge of the former Scylla territory in the Sauron Duchy, so she faced no real problems other than a number of quarrels with Doug. A Seiji then interfered with her plans, but she succeeded in defecting to Vandalia's nation. She worked in synthesizing gunpowder and inventing fireworks, and she was given a transformation staff, an item that is still few in number in Talashim. Kanako has a bright, cheerful personality, and she does not hide her wicked side, but she also has an airhead aspect to her. She chooses things that she can make use of and makes use of them, but she is a very hard worker. She is generally a calculating person, but she is also a dreamer. She had originally intended to make use of Vandalyu after currying favor with him, but she has become deeply obsessed with him without even being aware of it. Her objective is to have the idol culture take root in Lambda, but Vandalyu's existence is necessary for that to happen, so she is willing to fight to the best of her ability for Vandalyu and Talashim. If converted to an Adventurer's Guild Adventurer class, her abilities would be equivalent to B-class. This is because she was originally specialized in the use of her Venus ability and not the type to fight battles head-on, and because she has not yet done much leveling to increase her combat abilities. However, she is able to transform with Chaos, a skill that is unique to the Chaos Elf race, allowing her to fly or become temporarily transparent. She also possesses two divine protections, so she has much room to grow. Melissa J. Satom Elf-Chaos Elf, two years old, 15 years old in appearance, female. The reincarnated individual with the ability codenamed Aegis. Like Kanako, she betrayed the Bravers and also betrayed Murakami by parting ways with him. She was an extremely ordinary girl during her life on Earth and lived her second life in origin with the motto of safety first, with the aim of living a good, long life. However, after she joined the Bravers, her ability to produce an indestructible barrier was taken notice of, and she was assigned dangerous missions. It seems that this is what led her to betray the Bravers. The Avalon Rakudu Hajiri told her quietly that if she continued to remain with the Bravers, she would be taken advantage of and inevitably killed. This allowed her to take the risk of betraying the Bravers. The reason she worked with Kanako is because she decided that it might seem risky at first, but it might actually be the safest option. She has semi-long hair with a face that is well-ordered but has no outstanding features, her chest is not particularly large or particularly small, and she has a moderately slim figure. She is beautiful but has been told that she does not leave much of an impression on people, which she was not happy with. However, Kanako has declared that she transforms with some makeup. She currently has black skin due to becoming an elf and then a chaos elf, so she is satisfied with her appearance now, as she no longer looks like a background character. She is also hoping that she can attain her own characteristic figure, like Darcia. She considers her own personality to be cautious and reserved, but in truth, she is bold and active. She and Doug Atlas have had an undesirable but inseparable relationship since their lives on Earth, and while they were creating gunpowder, she helped him by putting up her protective barrier to protect him from any possible explosions. They have gone on numerous dates such as going shopping, and she now thinks that it would be fine for them to become lovers. Kanako has been trying to persuade her to become an idol once a month, but she has continued to refuse, apparently because she does not wish to become buried and forgotten among the other, more outstanding members. At present, she is with Eleonora and the others on their mission to infiltrate the city of Morxie. 
Without Aegis, Melissa's combat abilities would fall between the lower end of B-class adventurers to the upper end of C-class adventurers. Her set of skills, such as space attribute magic, shield technique and staff technique, are focused on being a shield bearer and lack in offensive power. However, with the use of Aegis and the use of shield technique martial skills applied to it, she is equivalent to an S-class shield bearer. However, she would be at a disadvantage against enemies who possess the fragments of the Demon King and more powerful enemies capable of using superior skills with powerful aura calcum artifacts, such as the five colored blades, as they could potentially pierce her barrier. Name Melissa J. Satong. Race Chaos Elf. Age 2 years old, approximately 15 years old in appearance. Tidal Reincarnated Individual. Job Barrier User. Level 5-1. Job History Apprentice Mage, Mage, Guardian Warrior, Space Attribute Mage. Passive Skills. Dark Vision. Rapid Regeneration, Level 1. Death Attribute Resistance, Level 5. Superhuman Strength, Level 1. Magic Resistance, Level 1. Allure, Level 1. Self-Enhancement, Ancestor, Level 1. Self-Enhancement, Guidance, Level 1. Intuition, Level 2. Increased Magic Attack Power when equipped with a wand, small. Mana Cost Reduction, Level 3. Active Skills. Space Attribute Magic, Level 8. Fire Attribute Magic, Level 4. No Attribute Magic, Level 1. Mana Control, Level 6. Alchemy, Level 2. Dagger Technique, Level 2. Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 5. Archery, Level 5. Mount, Level 3. Staff Technique, Level 3. Housework, Level 2. Cooking, Level 3. Surpass Limits, Level 4. Shield Technique, Level 5. Surpass Limits, Barrier, Level 6. Artillery Technique, Level 1. Unique Skills. Aegis, Level 10. Chaos. Doug Atlas, Human, 2 years old, 17 years old in appearance, male. The reincarnated individual with the cheat-like abilities, codenamed Hecatincure. The three abilities that he possesses, Omnidirectional Perception, Telekinesis and Force Vision, are collectively known as Hecatonkir. On Earth, his name was Shirai Adaresu. His parents gave him this name with the wish that he could grow up to become a large man strong enough to support the weight of the world, but he hated the name and always intended to change it one day. Perhaps because of this strong desire to change his name in origin, he was reincarnated as the son of a professional martial artist in the federal stages. His new name was Doug Atlas, and he was born as a black person rather than an Asian. He is one of the reincarnated individuals whose appearances have changed significantly. He was bewildered by the culture surrounding him that was different to that of Earth's Japan, and also by the fact that he had become a person of a different race. However, he was satisfied with the fact that his name had changed and adapted to his new environment. When he was reunited with the other reincarnated individuals later in life, many did not recognize him, but it did not bother him. However, even now, he becomes angry when referred to by the name Atlas. On Earth, he was an ordinary student who liked martial arts and fighting games, but in origin, due to his improved physical characteristics and the influence of his parents, he awakened to his talent for combat and was aiming to become a professional martial artist or a special forces soldier in the future. Having the personality of a combat fanatic, he joined the Bravers organization founded by Amamiya Hirodo. However, he quickly became dissatisfied at the fact that they were only operating as an international disaster rescue team. The Bravers' policy changed to combat terrorism following the undead incident that occurred two years after the foundation of the Bravers' organization, and Duck thought that he could finally live a life that wasn't boring. However, he felt that Amamiya and Ndukuya's way of doing this was too lax. 
with the discontent smoldering inside him, he spoke to Melissa, with whom he had an undesirable but inseparable relationship with since their lives on earth, and both of them left the bravers. When he was reincarnated in Lambda, he opted to become a human with the same appearance that he had in origin except younger. Black-skinned humans did exist in Lambda, and it wasn't uncommon for adventurers to travel far from their birthplaces, so nobody thought that anything was strange about him. In origin, he had a very strong combat fanatic-like personality. However, his death to the out-of-control death attribute mana has made him realize that there are powers that even he cannot overcome, so that desire for combat has weakened. There is a serious side to him, and he is often subjected to the whims of Kanako and Melissa. After he left Murakami's group in Lambda, there were countless cases where people picked fights with him because he appeared to be a cheeky D-class adventurer enjoying the company of two beautiful young elf women. This gave Doug experience in fighting other people, and his initial impression after these incidents were, why are the humans of this world so strong? After he fled to Talashim, he was made a subordinate of Legion and worked in projects such as the test firing of firearms, the synthesis of gunpowder, the releasing of fireworks and, for some reason, working as Luciliano's assistant. When he is not busy with these, he listens to Vandalia's explanations of why muscles are wonderful, goes out to hunt monsters and follows Melissa to go shopping. Incidentally, as someone who was raised in the federal states in his previous life, he was delighted to learn that hamburgers and fries are available in Talashim. It is likely that he will cry tears of joy if Cola were to be successfully recreated. Incidentally, he already believes that Melissa is his girlfriend. In order to transform from a human into one of Vita's races, he drank Vandalia's blood along with Luciliano, but there have been no changes to his body thus far. He did not take part in the task of reconstructing Vandalia's soul on the first day as he was awake all night on that day, but he joined in on the task later on. Doug's combat strength is equivalent to that of an A-class adventurer if he uses Hecatinkir, and it drops to that of a B-class adventurer without it. This is because he has specialized in combat since his previous life. Because Rodcourt converted his experiences in origin to skills that existed in Lambda, his proficiency in the use of firearms has been replaced by the archery skill, but he has once again learned how to handle firearms after Vandalu asked him to help with the test firing of firearms. He has discovered and acquired the telekinesis user job. Name, Doug Atlas. Race, Human. Age, 2 years old, approximately 17 years old in appearance. Title, Reincarnated Individual. Job, Telekinesis User. Level, 90. Job History, Warrior, Mage, Berserker, Magic Warrior, Firework Technician. Passive Skills. Death Attribute Resistance, Level 5. Detect Presence, Level 2. Enhanced Muscular Strength, Level 3. Self-Enhancement, Guidance, Level 1. Night Vision Telekinesis Enhancement, Level 3 Active Skills Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 8 Dagger Technique, Level 7 Throwing, Level 5 Light Attribute Magic, Level 1 Wind Attribute Magic, Level 5 Mana Control, Level 6 Mount, Level 5 Coachman, Level 2. Archery, Level 7. Parallel Thought Processing, Level 4. Trap, Level 2. Swordsmanship, Level 3. Armor Technique, Level 1. Magic Combat Technique, Level 1. Surpass Limits, Level 5. Dismantling, Level 1. Compounding, Level 3. Firework Manufacturing, Level 4 Artillery Technique, Level 1 Unique Skills Omnidirectional Perception Force Vision Telekinesis, Level 10 S. Divine Protection, A. Luciliano, Human, 33 years old, Male Having finally hardened his resolve to abandon his humanity, he drank Vandalia's raw blood with Doug Atlas but he could not abandon his humanity with this method. 
This is a surprising result for him as his experimental animals transformed into monsters after consuming blood potion, so he had fully expected that he and Doug would transform as well. Dandelieu acquired a large number of bandits during the process of infiltrating the city of Morxie, but he expects that he will not get more subjects for human experiments for the foreseeable future, so he is being careful to not use all of the bandits at once. He had acquired prior permission to involve the former slave girls in his experiments, but he included Emma without permission, so Vandalieu reprimanded him for that afterwards. At this moment in time, he is likely the most informed person in Lambda when it comes to informed consent, excluding the reincarnated individuals. Name, Luciliano. Race, Human. Age, 33 years old. Title, Degenerate, The Emperor's Personal Disciple. Job, Sage. Level, 56. Job History, Apprentice Mage, Mage, Life Attribute Mage, Undead User, Alchemist, Slave, Earth Attribute Mage, Warrior, Magic Warrior. Passive Skills. Mental Corruption, Level 2. Mental Resistance, Level 7. Augmented Mana, Level 7. Mana Cost Reduction, Level 5, Level Up. Detect Presence, Level 2. Fatigue Slash Hunger Resistance, Level 10. Night Vision. Automatic Mana Recovery, Level 3. Increased Mana Recovery Rate, Level 3. Self Enhancement, Guidance, Level 3, New. Active Skills. Life Attribute Magic, Level 9. Earth Attribute Magic, Level 7. No Attribute Magic, Level 4. Mana Control, Level 9, Level Up. Alchemy, Level 10, Level Up. Staff Technique, Level 4. Silent Steps, Level 2. Etiquette, Level 1. Mining, Level 1. Chant Revocation, Level 5, Level Up. Surpass Limits, Level 5 Unique Skills S Divine Protection, Andrew Quattro, Ghost Chimera Battleship? Years Old The ship that was turned into an undead ghost ship by Vandalieu. The Golem Creation Skill was used to combine a pirate ship, a military ship, a merchant ship and a sorcery ship, resulting in a ship that is larger than any individual one of the original ships. He, she, possesses its own will and is capable of sailing on its own, but as a ship, she prefers being operated by its sailors. The lively undead sailors and pirates wandering around in the ship graveyard are used as Quattro's sailors. The captain of the pirate ship, the captain of the military ship, the captain of the merchant ship and the captain of the sorcery ship argued over who would become Quattro's captain, but in the end, it was decided that all four of them would captain the ship. They call themselves the Four Dead Sea Captains, and they have already decided on their special pose. At first, Quattro's interior was a treasure trove of marine life and filth, but it has become clean after Vandalieu and the sailors cleaned the interior and barbecued the marine life, it is now so hygienic that one would never guess that she is a ghost ship. Vandalieu wishes for a luxury cruise ship, so it can be assumed that Quattro's interior design will be upgraded to match the luxury cruise ships of Earth in the near future. Towed by Bone Man's beloved dragon Leo, Quattro completed a voyage to the demon continent, and she currently makes journeys up and down Talashim's waterways and the large river that connects Talashim to the marshlands. Curiously, she seems to get along well with Leo, who sometimes joins her for these journeys. She respects Sam as her senpai, and she dreams of also becoming able to fly through the sky and maintaining the comfort of its passengers no matter what the outside conditions are. Incidentally, she possesses the weakness of being unable to communicate through words to any non-undead being except for Vandalieu and Legion's Valkyrie. However, she is capable of manipulating the bow, which is carved in the shape of Perea, the goddess of water and knowledge, to gesture and try to communicate its will that way. She is equipped with one of the cannons operated by the gunpowder that was invented by Kanako and her companions, and a true deployment is planned in the near future. Quattro's current race title is Ghost Chimera Battleship. 
she is an undead that was created by combining multiple ghost ships and she would be designated as a disaster-level monster by the Adventurers Guild. The Guild would dispatch B-class adventurers to deal with her at the very least and A-class adventurers if possible. Rather than pure fighting strength, Quattro would be considered more of a threat because of the troublesome fact that she inhabited the sea and the fact that she carried a countless number of undead. Thus, it is thought that she would become more of a threat once she is equipped with more cannons. Translators note, note that I have used she and her for the purpose of writing the sentences in English, because ships are often referred to as female in English, but he, she is only written once in this entire section in Japanese. Quattro's gender remains undetermined. Name, Quattro. Rank, 6. Race, Ghost Chimera Battleship. Level, 80. Passive Skills. Special 5 Senses. Physical Resistance, Level 6. Mental Corruption, Level 7. Strength and Attribute Values, Sailing, Level 4. Strength and Attribute Values, Creator, Level 4. Self Enhancement, On Water, Level 4. Self Enhancement, Guidance, Level 2. Impact Resistance, Level 1. Active Skills. Surpass Limits, Level 7. High Speed Cruising, Level 5. Projectile Fire, Level 5. Scream, Level 3. Aura of Fear, Level 5. Artillery Technique, Level 2. Zadiri's Ghoul Wizard High Princess, 300 years old, female. The 300-year-old Ghoul Elder Chief with a grandchild. As a result of her plotting and hard work to rid herself of the title of princess, she has debuted as an idol for some reason. After trying to make Kanako the most famous transformation staff user, she has become deeply caught up in the idol business. Her rank has not increased, but she has changed jobs from magical girl to magic staff user. This job is an already existing one that is acquired by those who wield staves that are powerful magic items of upper class and above, or legendary class artifacts. It seems that she chose this job because its benefits are not only limited to transformation staves. There were apparently other jobs available to her, but one can easily guess what kind of jobs they were. She has begun to perform in concerts that are used as sermons, but the truth is that she doesn't mind that. She is unaware of Earth's idol culture, so she did not suspect anything when Kanako explained to her that love songs are hymns to Vita, and she enjoys bringing joy to people. It seems that she truly feels no dissatisfaction with the situation other than the fact that she is a princess. However, she has earnestly requested a change in the dance choreography for the concerts in which Badia performs, as it involves Badia lifting her into the air. It seems that she is standing at a critical juncture that will determine whether or not she can maintain her dignity as a mother. Thanks to Kanako's copying of memories using Venus, she has acquired the dancing and singing skills in a short period of time. Her increased mana recovery rate and light attribute magic skills have also awakened into superior skills, but she is reluctant to talk about them. She is particularly adamant about exercising her right to remain silent in regards to the name of the skill that her light attribute magic awakened into. A copy of her appeared in Alda's dungeon, but that was recreated from the time that the Merkshield Nation's Expedition Army came to Talashim, so it is not representative of her current strength. Name, Zadiris. Rank, 11. Race, Ghoul Wizard High Princess. Age, 300 years old, has undergone age reversal. Title, Magical Girl. Level, 95. Job, Magic Staff User. Job Level, 19. Job History, Apprentice Mage, Mage, Light Attribute Mage, Wind Attribute Mage, Philosopher, Great Philosopher, Great Mage, Wizard Princess, Magical Girl. Passive Skills. Dark Vision. Pain Resistance, Level 4 Superhuman Strength, Level 3 Paralyzing Venom Secretion, Claws, Level 2 Super Increased Mana Recovery Rate, Level 1, Awakened from Increased Mana Recovery Rate Mana Enlargement, Level 7, Level Up 
Automatic Mana Recovery, Level 6, Level Up. Increased Magical Power while equipped with a Staff, Large. Enhanced Attribute Values, Transformation, Level 6, Level Up. Self-Enhancement, Guidance, Level 5, Level Up. Magic Resistance, Level 3, Level Up. Active Skills. Light Princess Magic, Level 1, Awakened from Light Attribute Magic. Wind Attribute Magic, Level 10. No Attribute Magic, Level 7. Mana Control, Level 10. Alchemy, Level 7. Chant Revocation, Level 9, Level Up. Multicast, Level 8, Level Up. Surpass Limits, Level 8, Level Up. Housework, Level 2. High Speed Thought Processing, Level 7, Level Up. Staff Technique, Level 2, Level Up. Familiar Spirit Descent, Level 1, New. Singing, Level 3, New. Dancing, Level 3, New. Unique Skills. Zozigan's Divine Protection. Garrus's Divine Protection. S Divine Protection, Van Lu. Diana's Divine Protection, New. Badia, Ghoul Amazonas Night Queen, 35 years old, 27 years old, in appearance, female. Despite her mother Zadiriz's race title, Badia has become a superior race of ghoul with queen in the race title. Zadiriz has already handed down the responsibility of leading the ghouls, so she has become a queen-like figure for the ghouls of Talashim, the ghoul nation and the demon continent. With that said, she does not actually rule anything and is more of a symbolic figure. She watches the physical combat and magic training of others and has others watch her own training. Kanako has scouted her as idol talent and she has accepted Kanako's request. Once she makes her stage debut, she will become the oldest magical girl in appearance and also the only magical girl who specializes in physical combat. The definition of a magical girl has become very loose, but nobody seems to mind. She is currently training in singing and dancing. Meanwhile, Vandalyu is planning to remodel a transformation staff specifically for her use. She has acquired the Ogre Queen job, which can only be acquired by individuals with queen in their races titles that belong to races such as the Ghouls, Kijin or Kiryujin. Her development had slowed down after that, but she has broken through that wall after acquiring the divine protection of the moon giant Diana. Name, Badia. Age, 35 years old, 27 years old in appearance. Rank, 11. Race, Ghoul Amazonist Night Queen. Level, 1. Job, Ogre Queen. Job Level, 10. Job History, Apprentice Warrior, Warrior, Apprentice Mage, Mage, Magic Warrior, Wind Attribute Mage, Magic Axe User, Ogre Axe Blade. Passive Skills. Dark Vision. Monstrous Strength, Level 1, Awakened from Superhuman Strength. Pain Resistance, Level 7, Level Up. Paralyzing Venom Secretion, Claws, Level 6, Level Up. Magic Resistance, Level 7, Level Up. Intuition, Level 6. Strength and Attack Power when equipped with an axe, very large, Level Up. Mental Fortitude, Level 5, Level Up. Mana Enlargement, Level 2, Level Up. Strength and Attribute Values, Guidance, Level 5, Level Up. Strength and Followers, Level 5, Level Up. Allure, Level 2, Level Up. Strength and Attribute Values, Moonlight, Level 3, New. Active Skills. Axe Technique, Level 10. Shield Technique, Level 9. Archery, Level 8, Level Up. Throwing, Level 7, Level Up. Silent Steps, Level 3. Coordination, Level 10, Level Up. No Attribute Magic, Level 4, Level Up. Wind Attribute Magic, Level 7. Water Attribute Magic, Level 7, Level Up. Mana Control, Level 6, Level Up. Cooking, Level 3, Level Up. 
Surpass Limits, Magic Axe, Level 8, Level Up. Armor Technique, Level 5, Level Up. Magic Fighting Technique, Level 4, Level Up. Dismantling, Level 1. Commanding, Level 1, New. Surpass Limits, Level 1, New. Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 2, New. Singing, Level 1, New. Dancing, Level 1, New. Unique Skills. Zozigan's Divine Protection. Garrus's Divine Protection. S Divine Protection, Vanda EU. Diana's Divine Protection, New. Legion, Eclipse Legion, 2 years old? Legion has become an Eclipse Legion after the Eclipse caused by Alda fulfilled the requirement for the rank increase. As a result of that development, they have become able to take the form that each personality that makes up Legion had in their previous lives. With Vandalu's treatment using the mental encroachment skill, Shade, who had no body of his own and Azanami, whose body was covered in tumors, have acquired new forms. Though they are able to take these forms, they actually have no bones, and the clothes that they wear are made of flesh, so they would be unable to conceal the fact that they are not ordinary people if they were to be touched. They have also been recruited by Kanako, and their discussions are heading towards the decision of having the female personalities participate. Pluto has already received advice for appearing in front of the media before, and Valkyrie is confident in the volume of her voice. This has led to Isis, Hitomi and Azanami deciding to take part and enjoy their lives as well. Baba Yaga is against it, but in her previous life, she would often blow kisses or wink into security cameras before destroying them and her companions are now teasing her for it. She makes a reasonable argument, however, you think that means I can sing and dance on a stage? Work that involves destroying things and entertainment work are nothing alike. Guffetgarn, the evil god of labyrinths, elf in appearance, female? The evil god who serves Vandalu in the background in a vessel that has the form of an elf girl. It could possibly be said that she shares some similarities with Bonda. Her powers are reduced due to the fact that she is residing in a vessel, but her magic and precise control remain intact. The only gods capable of controlling space attribute magic as freely as her are Zurawarn, the god of space and creation, the evil god of the magic castle who has been sealed by all those forces, and the high-ranking subordinate gods of the space attribute that are a part of Vita's faction. However, Ark, the champion who was chosen by Rick Lent, was also said to be capable of precise control over not only time attribute magic, but space attribute magic as well. Erpel, Abyssal Vampire? Years old, male. The boy who was transformed into a vampire at the youngest age of all of the purebreed vampires of Vita's faction. He has a face with well-ordered features and is such a pretty boy that he could be mistaken for a girl with a simple change of clothes. He has a haughty tone of speech and manner, but on the surface, he appears to be a typical vampire. However, the truth is that he has always been easily disappointed even since before he met Vandalu. His hobbies are making dried foods, dried potatoes, dried persimmons, dried kombu, and pickled foods. Despite his haughty manner, he looks after others and possesses the weakness of becoming easily dejected. He joined the other gods in Vida's divine realm without invitation, wanting to teach Darshia something without actually having thought of something to teach her. This was one example of him becoming dejected. However, he is highly capable in combat, and although he does not possess any fragments of the Demon King, he is powerful enough that any adventurer party below B-class would stand no chance against him. Furthermore, he is focused when he is in combat, so the weaknesses of his personality do not show. He returns to normal the moment the battle is over, so there have apparently been numerous occasions on which he wailed and felt bitter over the insults that his enemies uttered despite having defeated them. He is currently the administrator of the dormitory that the new immigrants are temporarily living in. When the inhabitants of the dorm are late to return, he goes to search for them, and he punishes them with spankings when they break curfew. Everyone below a hundred years of age is a child to him, so he spanks them with no mercy. Diana, the Moon Giant
the younger sister of the sun giant Talos, father of the titan race and guardian deity of Talashim. She has the appearance of a dignified battle maiden, equipped with armor, a helmet, a spear and a shield. Even among the true colossi, she has a serious and methodical personality, and is often given the short end of the stick by Tiamat, who is wilder in nature. She does lecture Tiamat for this, but it does not bother her too greatly. She thinks of all titans as her nephews and nieces, and in the battle that took place between Vida and Alda a hundred thousand years ago, she fought against the colossi that sided with Alda, such as the boulder giant Gorn. Tiamat, the mountain queen elder dragon god. The enormous elder dragon god that possesses the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a dragon. She continued to live on even after Marduk's demise, and she is the highest ranking among the elder dragons that are of a divine nature. She was originally the elder dragon that ruled over fertility and abundant harvests, and because she was close to Vida, she sided with her faction with no hesitation and became one of the parents of the Draconid race. After that, she escaped to the demon continent and performed a lot of work there. She gave birth to the Meriugen race with the Majin ancestor and the Kiriugen race with the Kijin ancestor, and she also gave the ghouls her blessings to prevent them from dying out. Thus, in the demon continent's city, she is worshipped as the mother goddess. She generally has an open-minded, lustful personality, but she attacked Farman with all of her strength when he came to apologize. After that, she behaves as if she has forgotten her grudge towards him, but Farman told her that they could never be friends, but they could be allies in battle. Recently, Tiamat has been aiming to get Vandalyu.